Hello there and welcome to another Flat Earth debunking video. In this video what I'm going to be looking at is the hours of daylight in the southern hemisphere and we're going to find out that they are extremely inconsistent with any notion that the earth is flat. Uh, first thing we need to look at is where the sun is at the moment. Well the sun at the moment is you can see here, position of the sun, 19 degrees, 15 minutes south. So that's 19.25 degrees south of the equator. So we've got to Google Earth. So there's, there's, about, there's about 19 point degrees there. So anywhere south of this, according to the Flat Earth model, should be outside of the, the giant circle that the flat earth, the sun is supposedly moving around in the flat earth. Uh, it, it's getting so comical, this whole thing. I, I can't even, I find it hard to even keep a straight face talking about it. It's so stupid. But anyway, let's, let's see how far we get with this. Uh, now, the first place I want to look at is Sao Paulo which, as you can see, is south of where the sun is at the moment. So the sun is about 19 degrees, so we're down here. Now, Sao Paulo, I've already got this up, so we can get through it quickly. It's getting 13 hours, 17 minutes of daylight. Now, let's go back, go a little bit further south to a place called Curitiba. And Curitiba is getting 13 hours, 24 minutes. Now, Sao Paulo, 13 hours 17, 13 hours 24 minutes. The further away you're going from the sun, the more daylight you're getting. Hmm. Let's go to... And now, where was the other place I was going to have a look at? Um, that's right, Buenos Aires, which is... Ah, here it is, Buenos Aires. Or Buenos Aires, however you say it. And that's getting 14 hours of daylight. So we've gone from 13 hours 17, 13 hours 24, to 14 hours of daylight. And let's get way down south, get somewhere right down the bottom, which is the foremost salary place I've found, which is Ponto Arenas. Way down at the bottom of Chile here. And Ponto Arenas gets 15 hours 55 minutes of sunlight today 16 almost 16 hours so the further south you're going the more sunlight you're getting now how could that work if the earth if the sun is moving in a giant circle centered at the north pole well Let's have a look closer, look at what that actually means for the flat earth model. Now I've got, um, let's close this down just now. now. I've got a couple of diagrams ready to have a look at this. Now, uh, Ponto Arenas is in this one and Sao Paulo is on this one. Now let me get my cursor a bit slower, it's smaller for this so I can do this. Um, so I've made the cursor big so I could point at the other things so you could see. But I need it a bit smaller for doing this. So let's go down here. Right. So, now, <clears throat> what I've done is I've done these diagrams to scale based on where the sun is at the moment. So this is supposed to be looking down on the flat earth with the North Pole at the centre, as we all know, and the sun moving in a circle. And so I've done it to scale. This is where the sun would be in relation to the North Pole and the, the ice wall. And Sao Paulo is just a little bit south of there. Now, I've done it to scale so that this figures in, th um, in thousands is pretty close to the actual number. So Sao Paulo is about 7,800 to 800 miles south of the North Pole. And Ponta Arenas is about 9,800 9, miles south of the North Pole. So, Sao Paulo 
um, is getting at the moment is about 13.3 hours of daylight. Now that means that it must be seeing the sun for a little more than half this circle. In fact, it's about 200 degrees worth of that whole circle. Okay. Now the, the way you would do that is you would do 13.3 divided by 24 times 360, and that gives you about night 200. So you're not seeing it for this section here, round about here, and that's about 160 degrees worth. So we can mark this off using uh, the protractor on here. So I'll put that there, put that there. Now we need to mark off about 60 degrees on this side, sorry, 80 degrees on this side and 80 degrees on the other side, so that we get 160 degrees altogether. This thing's a bit tricky, bear with me. Right, there it is, 80 degrees. Just a minute. Fuck that all day. Right, it doesn't have to be exact. So that's roughly there. And then we'll go around to about 80 degrees around here. Just get it exactly about there, that's it. 7980 doesn't matter and that's going to be roughly there so the sun is visible starts being visible about here and you see all the way around here and it stops being visible here now as i looked at in my last video we know that the sun doesn't follow a path like this in the sky in the southern hemisphere at this time of year it, it comes from the south but anyway, let's go with this. Supposing this is the model, suppose this is what the sun is doing and the earth is flat and you are seeing the sun for that amount of time, then let's see how far away the sun is when you start seeing it. Show length. Well, according to this, you would start seeing the sun when it was about, have I done that right? Yeah, roughly right, anyway. About 12,200 miles away, something like that. Now let's see what happens at Punta Arenas when we do the same thing. So Punta Arenas is getting 15.9 hours of daylight at the moment. So that means it's visible for about 238 degrees of this circle, which means it's not visible for 122 at the top. So we need to mark off 61 degrees on either side. That round there. Is it 61 degrees? Right there. Let's make it smaller. And mark it off there. Right. And I'll go around to here. I can mark it off there. Okay. Now, so Punta Arenas, we see the sun, or you, sorry, you would see the sun if you were there from here all the way around to here if you're seeing it for 15.9 hours at the moment, which is what you are. So let's have a look at how far away the sun must be when you first see it at Punta Arenas. 15,500 miles away. Now, if the, wherever the sun happens to be directly overhead, it's not visible any further than 6,200 miles away from that location. So that's a problem. How could you be seeing the sun 15,000 miles away? Okay. And all I've, all I've assumed in this diagram is that the distance from the North Pole to the ice wall is 12,450 miles. The same distance from the North Pole to the South Pole on the spherical Earth. So the North Pole to the ice wall, 12,450 miles, that places the sun, when you first start seeing it at Punta Arenas, about 15,500 miles away. That's just, I mean, it's just ridiculous. Further to that, why is it, 
if you're closer to where the sun's moving in this big circle, your its visibility range is less. Why is it that you're only seeing it about 12,000 miles away when you're at Sao Paulo? Why is it you start seeing it, you're seeing it over 15,000 miles away at Ponte Arenas? Why is it that if you're closer to this circle, your days are shorter, but when you move away from the circle, you get longer days? So Sao Paulo, you're getting 13.3 hours of daylight. You go further south to Punta Arenas, you're getting 15.9 hours of daylight. And you're seeing the sun much further away. If it's a flat Earth. Now, obviously, if you think the Earth is flat, you must think some of this information is bogus, completely wrong. Well, that's this is just adding to things that you need to prove if you want to prove that it's flat. If the Earth is flat, there's no way that this, the daylight, the lengths of days could be getting longer if you're moving outside of the circle where the sun is moving around. Now, it's fairly easy to check. I mean, any source online anywhere will give you the same numbers. And it's not as if you're, I'm using information that came from Antarctica or from NASA as you lot are always like to go on about, you could check this yourself. You could just pop down to South America, or if you know someone down there, ask them, how long is the day? Um, I, I, I don't know how much more mileage you lot are going to get out of this nonsense. I mean, seriously. It's... People, it's over, all right? You've had a good run at it. It's just a joke. The idea that Earth is flat is just beyond comical. It might have been mildly amusing six months ago. Now it's really, it's just getting tedious, this thing that's going on. And remarkably, it seems to be getting bigger. The less sense it makes, the more people want to believe it. That, that means, it, to me, it's just a purely psychological, emotional phenomenon. It's got nothing to do with evidence or reality. And, as I say, it's, it really is time to come back down to earth. <laughs>